in the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. A pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment. The voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy bounded by the Milky Way, and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, a very warm welcome as usual, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, today you've got a, a very interesting gentleman, and I had mentioned I'd been to um, the Parsonage and, and saw Kai Muga, um, a very well-known uh, uh, physical medium, and if not the top in the world, certainly very, very close to it. Um, so I've got a, a lovely gentleman, Ladrin, um, uh, who lives and works there on the show tonight, and we're going to talk, be talking about uh, Kai Muga uh, and also uh, Jose Madrado, um, who I also saw there, a wonderful, wonderful psychic painter. Uh, if you do want to make a donation to the show, you can go to kcorradio.com and go to the archives, and you can find a donate button for the show there. And um, please do. Any donations are, are welcome. So, um, hi, Ladrin. How are you? Hello, Leo. Nice to hear from you, and uh, thanks for welcoming me on the show. Uh, it, it's my privilege. It really is. Um, I've been to a couple of retreats, and uh, uh, I do have to say um, the, the welcome and the energy uh, and the people um, that have attended the parsonage, including uh, yourself and, and uh, uh, your mum and dad, has been absolutely wonderful. And uh, I'm, no problem. I, and I, I know I speak for others when I say um, I was just there a few minutes and it felt, I really felt at home. It, it really felt like I've known you guys forever, um, which is always a great sign. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, the interest that, that was sparked um, to set up the retreat and to, to, to um, put, put these um, workshops and things together. Okay, well, we first moved here in uh, 2005, well, end of 2004. So mm. we're, you know, approaching just over 15 years now. And originally it was um, a place was called Parsons Side. And uh, we, we end up calling it Passing Side Retreat. And this was after having the planning put in. But what the spider off was um, something called uh, like a hemi-sync, uh, the, Monroe, the Monroe products, which yep. some people may be familiar in uh, in the outer body realms and lucid dreaming. Um, it's very popular, more popular in the sort of the 1950s, 60s. I think when a lot, not a lot of things were about, uh, like retreats, there's a lot more retreats out now than there used to be. Um, yeah. But this was a very, as I think you're aware of the Monroe Institute, aren't you? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Robert yeah. Monroe. Yeah. Astral yeah. projection, that kind of thing. Yeah. So B Robert Monroe was the person who termed out of body experiences originally because he was having all these interesting experiences beyond the body. He thought something was wrong with him. He was a total skeptic originally. <laughs> and he ended up going to the doctors and saying, hey, I'm having these experiences. And as you know, doctors would say, okay, just take this pill. You're probably depressed. He's like, I'm definitely <laughs> not depressed. You know, he was a very wealthy, successful businessman. And that's probably mm. why this helped him on his path, maybe, you know, planning this originally to yeah. set up an institute in America. Um, because being a radio engineer, he was listening to these frequencies uh, on different, you know, headphones and stuff. And yeah. he found uh, the binaural beat um, by himself, which then he patented hemisync, which is short for hemispheric synchronization, which is the synchronization of the hemispheres of your brain mm. to do with frequencies, just how binaural beats work by putting different frequencies in each ear to have a, a third signal within the brain. And with these frequencies, say you have headphones on, the left earphone would be basically 100 hertz. And the right one be like, say, 107.5. And that differentio, 7.5, will create a third signal of inside the brain, a whole focused brainwave state. 
And you can change that to anything alpha, beta, theta, delta, gamma, hypergamma, you know, beyond. Yeah. So um, my father started uh, researching our body experiences many years ago. He's always been interested in spiritualism and, and cosmic experiences. And so he started these um, practices um, by the IIC, I think it's called, International Academy of Consciousness, which are based in Portugal, um, to do with this um, technique. And he started having this out-of-body experience. And how we found this place originally was that my dad had a, my father had an out-of-body experience coming to the retreat center before we even came here yeah. and seeing how it is built now. So he were guided. So when he first arrived, he'd, he'd been here before. He goes, okay, this is the place. Yeah. So the story was that he was looking. We were living in Reading at the time in Berkshire in England. Yeah. And uh, my dad being an engineer for many years and having his own business. But on the side of that, he had another interest himself, a personal one with meditation and, and things. So we were all on the lookout for um, you know a retreat center to set up the Monroe Institute in the UK or something similar. So this was the basic ground or the start of the stepping stone of where we are now. Um, so I'm trying to keep the story short because there's a lot to put in. But no, that's basically, fine. We've got time. <laughs> <laughs> but basically um, we, there was a person that already put an offer into the property and was going ahead to buy it. And originally they were buying, we found many years later that they put an offer into the retreat because of the ley line activity here, the energy. We didn't know about that. Mm. We just knew that, you know, these people had put in an offer and they were going to go ahead to buy. Yeah. And my dad came down to have a look anyway. And the current owners at the time, which was quite interesting because um, they had the exact same anniversary as my parents and um, you know, other things and there's all these synchronicities. Yeah. And um so basically my dad came down and they're like you're wasting your time you know they put an offer in they're going to go ahead and buy but my dad was adamant that this was going to go through because he had this experience so he was yep. being confident in himself mm. and uh eventually they pulled out we put the offer in and yeah we moved in uh 29th of uh, october 2004 and uh, it was a long time a lot of hard work we put in as a family um i i moved here when i was about 17 18 years old yeah. um so i had already been meditating for a couple of years before before then and had an out-of-body experience myself and uh was a key meditator meditating a lot and so at the same time the foundations of the retreat was going up so was mine you know i was doing different workshops on spiritualism uh did all sorts of things you name it i've i've researched and gone to workshops and had had a look and you know, our body experiences, raw food, uh, being on breath areas and workshops, um, you know, mediumship, trance. I've been yeah. interested in doing trance workshops since uh, sort of 2005 onwards. Um, so developing on and off myself and doing platform mediumship. So I've had a whole array of different things. Um, but in that whole time, I was also doing a lot of work on the retreat, as well as working and doing care work and other jobs. Um, we we're doing a lot of the work ourselves. And my my uncle came to move with us as well, which was um, a couple of years later that we settled in, which is my father's twin. So yeah. those that know the retreat center here often see his double walking around, which is twi his twin <laughs> brother, my uncle. So uh, as a family effort, all four of us, uh, as well as the builder, two builders did a lot of work here. Um, yeah. Me, I put up all the plasterboard, did a lot of bulldozing. I transferred all, all the gardens uh, made some other things down the bottom garden, like um, structures, right, roundhouse and uh, landscaping. Um, my mum painted as well, and me and my uncle did a lot of the work. But mainly the base work of brick work and stuff was the builders. But I've been through, I've been here since the whole project had been built, and seeing it grow, and it's been a lot of hard work. I mean, we had months and years of just, you know, debris everywhere, and it was just we thought this was never ending, but it did. You know, it's it's coming to a place now where things have you know starting to be you know properly finished off. There's still yeah. areas that we like to improve, um, but I mean, in that time, uh, on a personal note, as a family, we weren't pulled apart. It just we'd never spent much time with each other because we're always constantly busy doing work here. Yeah, and yeah. the last sort of three, two or three years. Um, since we built the seance room which was originally the outbuilding uh like yeah. big garages 
and yeah. it'd been here for years and it, you know it was a big garage so we just transformed it into a seance room with you know no windows and and you know air con and stuff and mm. and uh you know I, I helped build that as well as well as my uncle and the builder and um yeah it's just i've seen the whole place transform and it's like every part you you see at the retreat i've yeah. been there i've worked on it most of it uh, same of all of us really we've all put our our hard work in there and it, it's good mm. way it's that energy because it's more special I was going to say, you know? yeah because you, you can you can really feel um that energy and the love that's in the building and uh yeah and so i've been to places before and if you take away uh, some of the spirit energy um they're quite sterile you know that there, there isn't anything there but that's the amazing thing of um i mean the gardens are beautiful but even the gardens have got energy and, and i do think it's the love that's been poured into it you know um, yeah mm. it's I interesting Sorry, mm. sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to say it, it's interesting as well that your your dad had an out of body experience and saw the place. Um, uh, when we went to buy our first house, there was a couple there, and uh, we liked it. Uh, we didn't have a car. We said, "Okay, fine, it's okay. We've seen it," and we ran round. It must have been nearly um, two miles to the yeah. estate agents, and of course they'd figured out what we was going to do jumped in their car beat us to it mm -hmm. um but we knew i knew when i walked in that we were going to have it and the same thing happened they dropped out so it's um it's amazing how spirit works isn't it if there's something that's needed they literally can move mountains can't they yeah well what was really interesting was that um from hearing discussions with my dad he said basically that when he had the experience he remember seeing i mean if you know the top upstairs windows like yeah. um we had to extend we, we extended the the back part which was where most of the accommodation is and it was just a normal pitch roof and then we've put eaves in the roof to allow two bedrooms so there's yeah. four sort of lot of windows so when the uh the planners for the building regulations came along they showed this picture which didn't look like what his experience did it, what, mm. what we had so he drew what he had in his experience and then the building regulations people the planning permission were like oh yeah that's much better you know <laughs> so they liked his idea that you know he had now what experience of so it makes you wonder you know was he seeing the final evaluation or was he shown that for a reason to make it a better structure who knows yeah. i don't think anyone's going to find the answer uh, to that no. but it's interesting uh I tell you what, both things actually feel right. You know, I, I think yeah. he, he was shown that that's how it was going to be. And of course, mm -hmm. it, it really happens to suit. Um, th there's also an interesting um, history to the place, isn't there? Because there's, um, if I remember correctly, there's a monastery that was there or, or connected to it. We don't know about that. I mean, from the experiences that we've had, um, when we first moved into the place, the kitchen area that a lot of people um socializing as you as you mm. as you've been there as well <clears throat> that was a big garage and um there's yeah, there's lots of interesting stories like we had to change a door to move to a different place yeah. so when this new door was put in uh my father was he was doing some engineering work and wrapping up a parcel for delivery and he said one day he saw this monk come through what looked like a door um well through, through sorry through a wall yeah. And then we end up putting this door in a place, I think, um, oh no, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my track. I think That's what fine. it was originally an old door in there and we saw this monk come out from what seemed like a modern door, doorway, but originally it must have been an original door that was in there. And when we moved in, all the walls were like grey in this garage. So um, often when I've seen energy in the past, I've seen like it better rather than like a white wall because it seems to have more of a, a white energy on the back of it you can see i could see like um windows which like seem quite thin vertical windows like you get in a church yeah. so that's the only evidence i have of monastery there are talk that there was some sort of chapel or monastery here but there's nothing in writing so yeah. we don't know but people who have seen monks walking around and and you know spirit monks then it must yeah. have been um that's yeah. only evidence we have yeah because it's it, I, I remember sitting there quite late into the night after um kai um did did his his demonstration and i was sitting there with your mum and dad and, and talking and uh, i saw um 
it was it was just a um, like half a man, but a black shadow moving right. up the stairs. Um, yeah. I said to your dad, because it felt like a monk as well, and I said to your dad, I've just seen that. So, yeah, it's it's um, interesting. So, how do you um, um, how did you start doing uh, physical mediumship demonstrations and the other things that you're doing? How did that come about? Uh, we've all had an interest in it, especially myself. I mean, I remember researching it when I was studying my parapsychology diploma. Uh, it must have been 2005 or, or six. I can't remember what year. And I was researching about ectoplasm and physical mediumship. And I tried to look around and it was it was hard because, you know, people keep quiet. It's not very well known. Yeah, it's in this day and age, it's a bit rare. Uh, but it's been around for many generations, you know, thousands of years. But um, the his, you know, the modern way, sorry, the the old way of doing it with materializations of, you know, seeing pass over loved ones. You know, interested me but i couldn't research any more about it because i didn't find anybody and i think the internet was very limited back then back in you know when i was researching as more of it now um so i think it was a mixture of my father and my uncle who you know had an interest and i think they saw a couple of physical mediums i, I believe yeah um i think david thompson i think was one of them i think they saw uh, rings a bell. I, I wasn't there, so I, d I don't know. Um, so I think, you know, them wanting to um, do more to the, the property and what could get more people here, because, you know, as a business side of view as well, is that, you know, we're very much out of the way, which is beautiful for retreats. But yeah. as now I see there's an oversaturation of retreats and, and things, and this is great. You know, there's a lot more spirituality going on, but we wanted to do something that's unique. And not only that, what's, which is close to our hearts, you know, stuff that we know, which is genuine. And mm. do, do you know what I mean? We're, with all these things that are going on now, there's so many different beliefs and we don't know what is real, but we like to stick with things that we can hold on to that are physical and physical mediumship, you know. And when I started doing platform myself many years ago, I stopped doing it for a bit and doing readings because I wanted people to get their own experience. So I started yeah. doing my own retreats here for people having not just out of body experiences and lucid dreaming, which I was focusing on, but mm. people having their own experience. And it wasn't just that, it was other things. So I think that's uh, really gone in line with our heart of, you know, having your own truth for yourself. It's yeah. your own journey, which you're getting your own information and your own experience. And um, I, I, yeah, it was a, a spark, um, which was separate from me. It was my uncle and my father. Uh, who who just you know wanted to create a seance room and as you know the term you build it and they will come <laughs> <laughs> absolutely it's a big it's a big spiritual thing isn't it you know yeah, yeah it I, is. I, lo I love that yeah yeah so so, so, so yeah, who well. did you have um 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 first would that have been david thompson um, we did have David Thompson here. I don't know who was actually first that we had here. Um, we've had Gary Mannion. We've had Michael mm. Shane. Uh, we've had Kai last year and now this year. Yeah. There's been a couple of other people that are private that have, you know, yeah. used the place themselves, which don't go public. And yeah. some I don't even know their names because, you know, they've come and rented it in themselves privately. Yeah. Um, so people can do that. But the main protocol that we have here is that we, we vet people, you know, so it's yeah. not just having anyone ring up and saying, Hey, can I come and use your sounds for them? It's like, well, who are you? Where are you from? You know, you um, have to be careful, don't you? You have to. Yeah. yeah. And another important thing as well is that if they do take place, this is, as well as our passion, our interest, it's also part of our security that we have here that, you know, at least a couple of the members from this property, you know, the passing side retreat, you know, we yeah. would like to sit in, uh in in a lot of future ones because we like to monitor what's going on we like yeah. to pass on the information the stories mm. and um you know because if anything if anything happens or anybody needs anything um we're there as a first person to go to that's cool. uh, really yeah pretty much um and what i've learned about seances and physical mediumship and and home circles is that the energy that's already built up in the area um spirit will use the the local sort of home circles of that area to build up you know the energy that are already there so that does help but really it's it's being in service to people you know and and making sure people are very safe and every person that we've had here we've made sure that they are 100 percent safe and um 
you know, because we want to make sure doors are locked and because not everyone knows the area and, yeah. you know, dangers that can be involved in, in, in physical mediumship, especially um, trance. Uh, we've had other people as well, uh, trance mediums. Um, uh, Andrew Weston is another one of them, um, as well as Jose uh, Madrado, who was here yeah. uh, the weekend, which was great. So um, my passion really is to get more physical mediums here public not public um to be part of this energy and to you know um we're building up a nice network now of people that we trust and trust yeah. us and yes. you know we just want to give experiences to people really um for people tr to enjoy. Trust, is a, trust is a very important thing isn't it um yeah. you know um explain um for the listeners um some of uh, the the issues um around safety and that and and the precautions that that um uh, you need to take you know um uh, for the medium's sake and also um for the public because uh, i think a lot of people probably wouldn't have had this experience so it'd be interesting for them no i don't know how many i've been in myself i've maybe been in over 30 uh, seances now um over the years and you know trance and stuff in the past so yeah. i've got good understanding from my perception but the thing the great thing is that we're always learning so yeah. it's you know things that i say if i miss something out that if people are listening to and think oh you know you missed out i do apologize because there's lots to cover um but starting with the precautions and the dangers um so first thing is quality control um if you're dealing with ectoplasm um important thing is that the floor needs to be completely clean free from debris um the uh, you know it should be clean anyway but as a hygienic point of view because you imagine it as uh if people know what ectoplasm is it's a substance that is produced from the medium which comes from the body um, which is a mixture of the energy of spirit as well as uh, a mass which is very delicate and very strong at the same time but yeah. very um exposed to light can be very dangerous so when that is um sort of when that comes out of the the medium's body through um, many different uh areas different um orifices such as the mouth anywhere it's internally so that's going onto the floor you know if, if full materializations are happening or phenomena it's touching the floor and then when that goes back into the body of the medium you know this is why you have to be careful that also any sitters if they have if they have any colds or flus you know yeah. the medium can also get that as well um i believe so I, i'm sure that is true yeah um, I, I know with um with helen duncan uh, yeah. when when they broke in there um and there was uh, lots lots of debris um it was, right. it was quite a dirty place really and there were cigarette butts and things and that oh, really? <laughs> and uh, yeah uh, and it was terrible and um when they actually did the autopsy um uh, the first question they asked um um the husband and family was um is she on any kind of strange diet uh because right. they found cigarette butts in her stomach and internal oh, really? organs and and stuff yeah um so yeah so i think it's nice for people um to understand that because a lot of skeptics say well you know it isn't real this that and the other um yeah, but but you do have to be i suppose you have to think about it is 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 it something you would ingest you know <laughs> so if you're willing to eat it then perhaps it's okay but if you're not willing to eat dust and all kinds of things um we're just going to go into a break and we'll be straight sure. back after this this is the voice of spirit your connection to the other side to understand something spiritually you must experience it and in order to experience it you have to experience it in your imagination Explore with us by calling 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Uh, give us a call now. Worldwide Colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors.
Welcome back to The Voice of Spirit, your connection to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at kcorradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the voice of spirit, Leo Bonomo. Hi, a very warm welcome back. We're talking uh, to Ladrin of the Parsonage Side Retreat, and uh, we'll give you the the address of that. Um, wonderful place, very impressed uh, by, by the energy and everything that's there. And uh, just before the break, we were talking um, to Ladrin, and he was explaining about some of the precautions that need to be taken uh, when when uh, sitting in a physical circle or attending a physical demonstration. So welcome back, Ladrin. Hello, thanks for having me. And uh, it's nice to talk about this subject and, yeah, um, I guess, uh, um, educate people as well. It's very important. Yes, I, 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 absolutely. Um, so you were telling us about some of the... Um, um, kind of security measures that need, you know, the floor needs to be clean and, and, and why. So um, uh, tell us more about um, about that and the build-up to, to demonstrations. And, uh, of course, the sitters, because they're very important as well. It's, it's important they play their part, isn't it? Yeah, well, first step is that when we have people come to us, especially new people, we, we, we vet them. So they either come and visit us or they are people that other people know that we trust. So it's not just any strangers that come out from the street or public. Um, And suddenly we get to know people and and them. And so we're starting to build up a a nice database of people, good sitters, basically. And it's rare to get good sitters. But again, like I explained previously that where we are, it's very beautiful. It's out of the way. It's quiet, which is perfect for this. Um, So all those that are checked and uh, been vetted, before we actually enter the seance room, we have uh, a session, a uh, seance uh, for the evening um, or whenever it is. Uh, it could be a trance day. We, we uh, Before people enter the room, they are checked uh, by two piece, by two persons, male and female, and they're padded down. All the sitters are padded down as well as the medium. They're checked for their pockets. No belts, no metal is usually allowed on them. No phones, nothing, no video equipment. Uh, so all this is properly um, taken into account. So this is um, for the protection of all sitters as well as the medium. Um, the most important thing dealing with physical mediumship and trance, um, as well as uh, Jose Madrado, who was doing the, the trance uh, painting, uh, is that any light emitting or flashes or strobe or, or light can, basically white light can harm uh, ectoplasm or the phenomena. It can... Um, disperse the energy and it can be very harmful to the medium as well so this is why we take proper precautions where sitters come in and make sure that it's just them and their clothes that's it so no metal no jewelry um and the reason why no jewelry as well because the metal can create static from the energy built up in the seance and yeah it, it can just sometimes burn the fingers etc um, not always but again this is again the precautions it's like um you know when you're dealing with like things with uh, all these regulations nowadays that you hear of like oh, the uh, manual exactly. handling and risk yeah. assessments you know we just want to make sure that everyone is safe and so right you know if we hear something that can happen we make sure the sitters are safe because we don't want anyone to be upset but really you don't need your your rings or jewelry you know so mm-hmm. that's an important thing um another important thing is that every medium that we have here um they are always uh, bound usually, or they have controller like Kai. He has two controllers, yeah. one either side. But every medium that we have here is cable, di- cable tied down or strapped down um, yeah. for the reason that we know that they're not getting out of the chair and they're touching us and in the dark. Yeah. But it's not always in dark conditions. It's usually in red light or some blue light. A lot of mediums work in red light. 
And um, yeah, again, for that reason, no white light is in the room. There's no objects, um, any, there's no aircon lights. We've taken the light bulbs out. Yeah. Um, there's no, there's no windows in there. It's completely just purposely built for like dark room phenomena, basically. So that's important. Um, going on to the sitters, the sitters are important as well, where it's not just about, it's not just a show. You don't just sit there and just watch. You're giving your energy uh, mm. by singing by raising the energy to build up um first time sitters they can sometimes often be a bit tired after um mm. because their energy body isn't used to giving their energy into the room but myself often sitting now i feel more energy energized so my energy body is more utilized and i can see the energy coming from me and molding into the room now more so where i'm giving my energy into the room which is important so good qualities of sitter is open-minded um being positive not feeling tired um positive attitude no expectations and yeah sitting regularly which is important it's also important not to overeat isn't it and certainly no alcohol um as a sitter um you, yeah you know, yeah well i i don't i don't take any alcohol myself um I, you know i think that taking drugs and alcohol can distort reality in your mind and yeah. you know it can allow other lower den densities to entities to come in you know and un unknownly so you're doing a trance state so i i don't like to be around alcohol at all it can really yeah. affect me uh, even the smell of it um but yeah it's it's um i mean every medium works different some mediums need a full stomach to work on others need to eat a lot after um mm. and the same for the sitters as well it's important to sit not with a full stomach because otherwise you're using a lot of energy to break down that food yeah. and to digest so it's important to be just comfortable um and as well as uh, like water you're not allowed to take any water in there with you um and conditions as well it's not so i think it can be a bit cold some mediums like to work around 17 degrees um so in the winter time it can feel a bit cold so often we have a lot of people going in there with onesies and uh, <laughs> you can often think you know, ski mask and things. Yeah. If the neighbors were to see us, which they don't, they'll probably see a bunch of people in the winter going in their onesies in there, but it's what people feel comfortable in. You know, we have slippers and onesies and just, you know, jumpers and just keep them warm really. And, uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's a long thing, isn't it? And, um, I know from my experiences having sat, um, several times, um it is an experiment sometimes it can last an hour and the power just gives um i've been in where it's been over three three hours you know closer to yeah. three and a half hours yeah, and uh, 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 yeah and i, I think um, what people don't realize is that uh, when you're in there um and locked in and everything's set it's not a question of, excuse me, can we stop? I need the toilet. Uh, you're yeah. in there, aren't you? <laughs> you are, yeah. I mean, like, when the retreats I've done without body experiences and loose dream, dreaming, mm. we've also done experiments like, uh, you know, sitting, not just seances, but sitting as, like, uh, development circles. Yeah. Um, there's time distortion that happens. So you could feel like you've been in there maybe, like, half an hour, but, like, two, two and a half hours have gone by. Yeah. Um, and a lot has happened in that time. And you haven't fallen asleep or you haven't gone to deep meditation. It's just there's time distortion. Yeah. And a lot of people have experienced that here in my retreats that I've done, as well as the trance days and seances. And, you know, it, it never feels long because there's always, you know, people enjoy coming here and, you know, the experiences. Um, but it can seem like it's, you know, a, where's that time gone, basically? Yeah. I think you find that in general life, you know, because um, um, if you're enjoying yourself, you know, as the saying goes, time flies. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I've, something I found um, quite strange, but in a sense logical, is that if you're having a day where everything's good and it's flown, you tend to, to, to find it, it's flown for other people um and the opposites happened as well when it's really kind of dragged you know you talk to people and they go oh it's been a long day and and that um so it's interesting that you talk about time distortion and the way that that kind of um affects us in normal life as well as this and i yeah i think um well i go back to a few experiences in the sales room we've had but also mm. the retreats that i've run here 
because um, if you you say to yourself, so you've seen the headphone jack by the wall by the bed. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've got an audio room. So when I do my retreats, I get people to arrive. You don't have your phone on you the whole weekend. You don't have a watch. You have no sense of time. So you have, you know, no sense of time at all. So you go mm. go back to your original patterns. And I get people to, you know, uh, I do pre-recorded soundtracks in their accommodation. So they have an eye mask and headphones. It's me, um, you know, pre-recorded so they can, it's like voice guided. Yeah. And some of the tracks can be like 90 minutes, 60 minutes. Um, but sometimes the 90 minutes ones, people often come out and they think like 10 minutes have gone by and mm -hmm. uh, you know 90 minutes I, I don't say until the end of the retreat like on the third day and saying okay guys this is how long this was and people are like no and uh, <laughs> people have enjoyed themselves though they've had some good experiences um but from having the seances here and the physical mediumship i'm not going away from my stuff it's just like it's such a big interest and you can mm -hmm. learn so much from physical mediumship because you can learn about past lives your own energy you meet so many like-minded people um, you have some, you know, really evidential, evidential sort of phenomena in the room that really people, you know, they get not addicted to it as such, but they want more, you know, they want to be part yeah. of these circles, um, which is why I've, uh, the website that I've created for the retreat, um, is still un under the umbrella of passing side retreat, but I've called it circle sitters. And, yeah. uh, so you can find us on circle com. more, you know, information about where we are, but yeah. that's. My, also, my father's passion is about not just about what's happening here, but for people at uh, home, you know, if they can't travel to us, is to start their own home circle. And it could just be with a couple of friends once once a week, just sitting. Uh, it could be in darkened conditions, but really just sitting. And, and over the years, things will build up, build up even more. And if you're mm -hmm. if someone in that group has the ability for physical mediumship, then things will start to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think that you need um, more precautions for physical circle than perhaps a, a mental circle and, and psychic circle? It depends how you work. I think there should be a standard practice like rules or you know regulations in, in involved with the umbrella of everything. But yeah. when you go into physical and if someone has a potential to produce ectoplasm or go deep in trance, then you have to be prepared if... Um, you have to know how to, how things work, you know. So mm. throughout the whole duration of that, you make sure no white light is produced at all. You make sure that you have a red torch or you had a red lamp on yeah. very, very low light. No other disturbances. Make sure no one can enter the room. Um, so it's just it's your time for spirit. Make sure you don't get any disturbance at all. Because uh, like with Helen Duncan, I believe the story is that the police came and knocked down the door or something and, yeah. Dis yeah. and started her. So um, it's like, yeah. I'm not sure. The, the, they, they did the three things, basically, that you just don't do. Um, yeah. So there, there were the police there, but there were some intelligence officers as well. And okay. they, they broke in. So that's a, a huge disturbance and a shock. They turned the light on. And then oh. one of the guys, uh, I think it was the, uh, an intelligence officer, grabbed her by the arm. Oh, um, you know, so, uh, I mean, this is why she passed away after, um, 14 days, you know, yeah. it was, um, it's a real shock. Um, and I have heard quite disturbingly, and perhaps this will explain why, um, sitters need to be vetted, etc. Uh, cause y y there are occasions when a skeptic will get in and because they just don't believe in any of this at all. And they feel that uh, maybe it's a puppet or something, um, in the middle of the sounds, they'll, they'll try and grab the ectoplasm or, or what they think might be cloth or whatever. Um, and it can cause severe burns, uh, usually around the abdomen, um, to, to the, to the medium, can't it? Well, yeah. And this is another reason why, you know, I like to sit in as well to make sure that I'm always, checking that no one's going to get up and run and you know thing you know doubting themselves yeah. um i mean you have to believe what you want to believe if people aren't ready for this they're not ready this isn't for everybody no. um for me i want to learn more i want to be part of it more and understand you know what's going on um but yeah there can be you know very important dangers that people need to be aware of and um you know if, if you're very skeptical or you're doubting then it's most likely you won't be able to sit anyway because you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. we've, yeah. we've had some skeptical people come along and um it's quite a popular thing that 
a lot of mediums who um trans mediums physical mediums that even if they're bound into their chair um yeah. matter through matter through cable yeah. ties you cannot get out of cable ties you cannot get out of being bound yeah. in the chair um yeah. Uh, from hearing Kai's talks as well, again going back to Helen Duncan, she was often in in a sack in like um, with uh, wax Absolutely. seals, I believe, yeah. and she was seeing out of her of her restraints. At the end of the seance, she was back in the restraints. So <laughs> this is another thing that people don't understand in seances that this still happens. You know, nothing's yeah. changed. It, yeah. Really, that you don't need to be restrained at all. Um, it's just you know if if spirit want to use the the body of the of the medium they will um yeah. and they will show ways that i mean with a couple of mediums we've seen the cable ties being taken off still intact and being given to sitters and yeah. uh, there's no way you can do that you know it was checked before <laughs> yes. and uh, so people still scratch their minds and they still believe what they see rumors on the internet and you know all this drama it's not needed because it's negativity and yeah. It comes from the people that haven't even sat and and been part of seances and understand what actually happens. Mm. Um, so that's an, that's a really important f- factor to understand is that you know spirit if they want to move the medium if they want to use the form they can and you know the medium doesn't have to be strapped into the chair to do that. So yeah, I, I remember seeing. I, I think it happened. Um, well, it definitely happened with David Thompson. Um, mm. uh, I, I've seen it happen. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name now. Um, and uh, um, it's it's kind of um, extra proof at the end of the night. And what they do is um, Spirit will pick up the medium or levitate him out mm-hmm. of the cabinet. And, of course, this is all in darkness. And literally, I think, for effect, drop him. He's, he's only a foot or so high, but drop him into the middle of the seance floor. So there's an almighty thump. And yeah. it's like, you know, how the hell did, you know, if you're thinking skeptically, how the hell has he got out of the cabinet and been dumped in the middle of the floor? Um, and I think it's it's quite effective, you know, because, again, it adds to what you've seen, felt and heard. Um, and, uh, you know, it really gives you something to think about. And um, have you been, I'm sure you have. So it's a rhetorical question, really. Sure. Um, but um, have have you been touched by a spirit as well? Uh, by ectoplasm, you mean, or um, no spirit? Will spirit when they've when they've materialised? Um, yeah, I well, it's I've I've seen ectoplasm and gone up to touch it, as well mm-hmm. as being in the seance and have been touched as well, and have been moved, and um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, very interesting. Um, yeah. because you, people believe that although the the ectoplasm. Um, is is very delicate and you know mm-hmm. getting the precautions with light it, you know it can be it's very very strong you know it's robust um, isn't it mm. you've, you've obviously had another guy shake your hand very strong before do you know what I mean and it's, yeah, yeah it's strong as that <laughs> i mean they can they can move objects and they can lift tables heavy tables and in the darkness because again they need more energy in the dark to do that um, phenomena uh, not always but usually the case but yeah it, it's very very strong yeah. But touched by spirit, they're very gentle. You know, they they Absolutely. know exactly where you are in the dark. Um, I've even had m- I wear glasses sometimes, um, yeah. unless I'm wearing contact lenses. But in pitch black, they took my glasses off very gently and then put them on somebody else's head. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it was yeah, it was crazy. So you can't yeah. fake that in the dark. <laughs> no, no, because again, people say you know, well, you know, there's rods and there's wires and that kind of thing. But as you say. To, to find um, a head with glasses on and remove it and find another head um, is just a remarkable feat in itself. And uh, yeah. I, I've been touched by a spirit and they're warm and solid because I, I think sometimes people feel, well, if it's kind of um, ghostly, then mm. it'll be uh, ephemeral. You know, it's, there's nothing, there's no weight to it or anything. Um, but again, um, you you know you get poltergeist activity, don't you? Where um, real heavy furniture is just thrown across the room. Um, yeah. So it does show you um, um, the power of, of spirit. Um, give us the the um, address and the phone number of the Parsonage Retreat, because um, I think as people um, uh, are interested in this, then. Um, you know, they'll, they'll hopefully want to make inquiries because, uh, 
I think it's wonderful. I, I think mental mediumship can be good, can be very evidential, and hopefully mine is. Um, but it's a whole different experience to have a loved one um, come up and talk to you. And because you know, uh, you know them intimately, you can feel the energy, can't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, beautiful thing, and it's something that this world needs as well because you know a lot of people are lost, and um, you know, and this is why home circles and circles we get I- information direct from spirit. You know, yeah. we can get very lost. You know, myself as a as a practicing medium over the years and psychic, you know, the stuff I know and get intuitive about, but yeah. I'm not always correct. Do you know what I mean? And the mind is a very um, subtle thing. Um, yeah. But being in these circles where you directly talking to a spirit who, you know, the medium is in, in trance, you're having yeah. direct com, com, contact. So that's that's beautiful. And also with past over loved ones, you know, it's yeah. having that more of a belief and being really more re- laid back in this reality to know that, okay, yeah, there definitely is more beyond here. And even if we've had experiences, it just, it reinforces that, um that that ability that reality that there is you know definitely something beyond here and and everything yeah so so give us some um, the retreats address and uh, a contact phone number and uh, and the website while you're there as well so um uh, yeah you know. uh a website well the one that i've created is yeah. circlesitters.com very easy to remember i try to get quite catchy um yeah. so you can find the whole address on there um and the phone number uh, but if you want it given here, the number for England uh, is 01278 652 And um, the address is at Party Inside Retreat. It's in Bridgewater, which is in Somerset in England. And um, again, you find the whole address on the website. If you want to find us on Facebook, um, I do have my Circle Cities page, but under the umbrella of Party Inside Retreat, um, if you look under Party Inside trance and physical mediumship center you'll find a bunch of information there with testimonials past experiences uh, and everything so yeah yeah Uh, that'd be great and uh for um uh, i'll just spell out the parsonage it's p-a-r-s-o-n-a-g-e and side as in normal retreat so if you do want to google it um they they've had uh many um experienced and well-known people um Mm -hmm. when we come back uh we're going to talk a little bit about um kai muga and what's happened um at his demonstration and we've also got um jose madrado and uh he works as a trance painter psychic um artist and um i was privileged to, to witness kai um and jose and he channels old masters and uh, over a hundred of them. So they come through and uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that. So um, if you're um, interested, then definitely visit uh, the Parsonage Side Retreat uh, on the computer, on the web rather. And uh, we shall be um, talking again about Madrado and uh, Kai Mugger. So if there are... Um, any uh, questions, then um, you can uh, send them there or to me, and uh, we'll we'll answer any any further questions that you might have. So uh, you can get me on my site, which is wwwleo bonomo b o n o m o dot com, and you can uh, find links there as well. And uh, you'll find links to this show on the. Uh, archive so it's uh, www.kjorradio.com you've been listening to leo bonomo leo bonomo the host of the voice of spirit live every thursday 11 a.m pacific 2 p.m eastern exclusively on the kcor digital radio network For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? 
This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news. In the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. A pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment, the voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy, bounded by the Milky Way, and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, a warm welcome back. Um, if you would like to read uh, a book that was produced by Automatic Writing, it's my own, it's called Summerland. Uh, there's also another book called A Book of Thoughts and its Poems and Observations from Spirit. You can find both of those uh, on Amazon. So if that's something that you want to do, just Google it and uh, and uh, purchase the books. I'm sure you'll find um, both of them interesting. Um, we're, we're talking uh, to Ladrin and um, he's connected with the Parsonage Side Retreat. Uh, wonderful place in Somerset. And they have lots of demonstrations, all kinds of things going on. Um, as I've said a, a few times already, it's it's a wonderful place to go. Brilliant energy. Um, so if you're interested um, and you've uh, missed part of the show, then uh, uh, in the last segment we uh, we gave out the information there. But you can all, always Google it. So welcome back, um, Ladrin. Thank you, Leo. Uh, yeah, I um, had a look at a bit of uh, summer land this morning, I think. I was, I was interested about the, the picture in the back I saw, I think, when yeah. you were younger, um, which is yeah. quite good. I think it was your grandparents uh, in spirit, which were captured. Is that uh, right? Yes, yes. I, yeah. I, I was um, I was quite young. I was about nine, I think. And um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it, it's a it's a real picture. Um, I yeah, was, I can uh, see that. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 1957. For those who haven't seen it, but if you want to, you can um, find that picture on my site somewhere. And um, my grandfather passed away in 1933, and in Italy, as they did, they they have photographs on on the tomb, etc. Um, so there's that proof, and uh, it's taken in the garden in Forest Gate, and. Um, uh, it was taken many years ago, and the original is actually quite a small picture. And right. I had that picture for years um, and didn't see my grandfather. And sometimes the spirit do. Um, they materialized it. So I'd had it for a long, long time, had a look at it and thought, oh, my God, there's a man in the background, um, <laughs> which I immediately recognized and um uh, strangely, we, we should talk about Helen Duncan because uh, there's a lovely lady, her granddaughter, uh, mm. uh, Margaret Hahn, uh, who's very good friends. And she was over one time and um, she was looking at the picture and she said, oh, I can see the lady. So I had a slight inspiration. I don't normally do this. So I went upstairs and got some um, pictures of uh, the family and she sure. went, that's the lady, you know, and it was my grandmother, bless her. So, right. Yeah, but it, it's a strange picture because um, things were appearing in it all the time. And right. uh, in the one I've got um, in my living room, uh, there's about um, 18, 19 things. There's several people. Um, there's dogs, there's rabbits, there's a deer. Um, there's all kinds of things appearing in it, which is, is lovely. Um, so, but there you go. But, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, so um, we're going to talk, um, aren't we, about some of the um, trance uh, mediums uh, that you've, you've had there. And, and also uh, Kai Mugger, um, well-known physical medium. What was your experience like with Kai? Well, uh, yeah, phenomenal, really. Um, I saw him last year. He came here for the first time. And, uh, you know, as a test run, I think he did about three or four seances. I think he did a table tipping. 
which wasn't just table tipping. It's more than that. You have a lot of phenomena, objects flying in the room, the yeah. table going crazy. We had an apport, which was great. And uh, the seances, which are phenomenal. They're all structured very similar in my experience, I think, because um, Hans Bender, his, uh, the main communicator that comes through, which works part of the spirit team as a collective, yeah. Um, Hans is the main sp uh, spirit communicator that when Kai is in trance, he completely goes out away and Hans enters his body and he's talking and taking completely over. And he comes from a parapsychologist background, I believe, uh, in, fr in Germany. And so he, he was very much interested in exper experiments. Um, so a lot of the seances that you see are experiments showing that you know, this cannot be performed by the medium because the medium is being controlled. And also that they do experiments with like a plaque, which is like a, a square um, piece of wood with like uh, sprayed with glow in, the tar glow in the dark spray on top. And you'll see spirit hands going over um, the handkerchief experiment where uh, a person holds it out. Um, you also have the trumpet uh Trumpet's voice phenomena, have you heard of that before? But it yeah. has glow in the dark spots on the end. So you see that moving about in the room. Um, ping pong balls. It's all these different experiments that that, that he does. Um, so they're very much set out very similar. Um, but he doesn't just do seances like that. He does also for advanced uh, sitting formalizations as well. So, But the seances are very much set out very similar. And and also a big part of that, which people enjoy, is because after all the phenomena, and you don't have a phone to, to capture things, as, as you know, and you're not allowed, yeah. is that you take something away with you that a lot of people usually sometimes, not always, but you're usually given a report after, which is a remembrance from the evening. Because yeah. leaving away from those experiences, you don't ever forget. But having that, you know, that stone that you have or that object that you're given from spirit or yeah. within that experience it just it's a reminder of of that it was physical you know so um another medium that we've had here uh called michael shane he's been doing this for a number of years he's coming back again in november um he he specializes in in the ports and he, it's funny he says it's like um some of the the crystals that are, are created come from spirit. They come from Shambhala or they're, they're created from spirit, from matter, um, I believe. But other objects that turn up like coins and rings and bracelets and other things, they are someone else's lost items. And it's it's almost like spirit's uh, lost property. You know, it's kind of like there's a rule yeah. in spirit, he said, <laughs> like if, um, if someone has dropped an item or they've forgotten about it or not interested then there's only a certain amount of days or, or whatever, I believe, where spirit take notice and then they dematerialize it and then they, they give it in these seances or their, their ports at yeah. the time. Um, and for those skeptics out there listening, it's again, you have to sort of watch it for yourself because um, especially uh, Michael Shane, who's we've seen him, you know, have some food beforehand mm. and he see when he goes into the seance room and does an apportation, uh sitting he often eats a banana beforehand and yeah. if he was to regurgitate you know stuff then bits of banana and it will smell and it's not mm. it's from they, he says like a portal that comes up the roof of his mouth yeah. uh and it, it comes out through that way and there are things that the human body can't even physically <laughs> swallow and bring back up because yeah. it's so heavy some of these items are so big um to come up you just cannot physically regurgitate if you had to um yeah. so that's very interesting uh with michael shane how he works is that um the reports are given individually to people so all me all the mediums that we have here work in completely different ways um so that's beautiful you know ports are great uh, they're especially given uh objects to people um i i was speaking to a friend um a couple of days before i saw michael shane for the first time i believe and I had a friend who was in London and he wanted to get um, some Malachite after going into the Natural History Museum. He goes, oh, I feel very much connected to my heart. Mm -hmm. And all these stones came out and there was about 50, 70 different little stones and gems and, and everything. And one came out, which was Malachite. <laughs> and I knew this was my friend. And I was like, yeah. this is very interesting. Spirit listening, you know, they've delivered. So you ask, it, it is received. So 
that's quite fun i have heard of the ports and and for anybody that doesn't know um it is something as you say dematerialized from one place to another um yeah and uh, sometimes little statues and things um that weigh a couple of kilo i mean yeah you know you, you <laughs> however um well endowed you may be you, you can't hide something that weighs a couple of kilos and just walk normally into the seance room you know to have it um appeared i think it was interesting with kai um i've seen lots of phenomena i've not seen that kind of um apportation mm. and um there were 18 of us there and um he produced uh some gemstones some are glass but um gemstones and things um and they came um out through his eyes um his nose his ears Oh, um, yeah. the eyes that they would damage the eyes if they were to come out but they are safely apported through the eyes so mm -hmm. yeah very sharp and dangerous if you were to attempt it yourself um but yeah, yeah. it's yeah, crazy absolutely. and uh, and i was really honored because uh, um hans was talking about someone that had um uh you, you know been of service to spirit etc etc and i thought oh that's really nice um i didn't realize they were talking about me bless them um <laughs> so i was really i was really honored you know it's it, it's um it was brilliant um and, and kai um apported um a large um uh, uh activation think, stone activation stone which is about two two inches across um and again oh, as you it. say some of these things you know you could think well you could hide something in your mouth or you could swallow this and swallow that um but to swallow a cut stone that's um sort of two inches across is a is a bit of a feat isn't it <laughs> well, not only that, it's also um, also to add that um the um a lot of the senses we have especially kai last year when he was here um he was strip searched like you know down to yeah. nothing there's also videos evidence of that and um so you know everyone was searched isn't this no way that was in there we had a really interesting experience last year where i took uh well, i was with kai and and his his partner and circle leader sorry his wife uh to to glastonbury and they love all these statues coming out etc and uh i think julia saw this uh statue in 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 the window of a shop and she's like oh i really like that you know it was like this white statue of like the green tara i believe mm -hmm. and um carl's like no no we're not going to get it in case people think that we've you know brought it and it's supported at our seances or something yeah. so yeah. He, he just sort of said to spirit oh we'll put it on the list you know mm -hmm. so um that very evening um after everyone was checked and kai was strip search as well as you know yeah. julia was search as well and um basically this this huge statue about i don't know eight nine inches tall appeared about a foot away from my foot because I was doing the music <laughs> at the time. Yeah. And it happened very, very fast. And I saw Julia, you know, the closest person to me was Julia next to the cabinet and yeah. she was in charge of the, the light and stuff. And it just, it just appeared very, very fast. And I was yeah. like, there's no way that could be faked. You know, you can't hide that under your arm and go in and not be searched. Like, what's this about? Um, yeah. And it's just, it's crazy. I mean, the phenomenon that we've seen is great. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's placing it, isn't it? Because it's like, well, um, how do you kind of get it there in that way? Uh, can you throw it? You know, but I mean, it's, <laughs> um, if it's stood up, you know, um, it, that's a bit of a feat as well, isn't it? To throw it and have it land exactly right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do, I do find those, those, um, kind of things fascinating and of course it's just spirit's way of saying you know think about this um you you've mentioned being strip searched and that and i i think um people don't realize um what kinds of things mediums go through because oh yeah God. Um, it, it's i mean it, it's 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 embarrassing it's degrading you know helen duncan um was always strip searched and mm. without being too graphic i mean they're looking everywhere yeah. um you, you know and it, it, it's it's humiliating i would think especially in those times you know times are yeah. a little different now but um yeah because I, I think people just don't understand you know um uh because mediumship itself um 
and the more physical you get takes a great toll on the body doesn't it i mean it affects the health um affects the weight um um, yeah, and even if the the medium eats healthy, it's it's mm-hmm. the weight retention because they're dealing with all that energy. I mean, you've seen the lights from Kai in the room before. You know, mm-hmm. that's a lot of energy taking on that body. It has to. I'm I'm guessing. I mean, maybe every medium works differently, but I mean, Helen Duncan, you know, she she was big as well, and yeah, yeah, you know, again, like, what sort of effort do they have to go through? And even after you know after the strip searches, people who are skeptical, they still don't believe. You know, because that how else do these objects come into the room but mm. a lot of questions i get is what's the purpose of all this you know what's what is this doing it's like well you know people want contact with past of loved ones they want information and there is information there there's direct information from spirit from other guides as well i've had um great resources from other mediums as well as michael shane who's given me pa- um, past life experiences information which has confirmed things um but really like i get a lot of the question you know what is the purpose of this what what is it for i was like well it's it's really giving more solid evidence and pushing you more on your path as an individual as a person who's spiritually awakened and wants to awaken more it's just giving you just that kick up the bum a little bit more of going okay i'm really this is you know this does exist i want to explore more and um i think once someone's been in a in a seance once physical mediumship then mm. they have enough experience to form their own home circle or get something started and that's usually the case and that's uh, again that's our passion that's our wish that people start up something their own and it can take years of dedication yeah absolutely. um things things won't happen straight away it will take time but spirit know that how dedicated you are they'll be there um that's the commitment it's not having commitment to watch a soap or tv show you know there's another commitment here you know that's dedication and it's been dedicated and not never giving up yeah yeah absolutely i mean one of the things um uh, uh, that that i also haven't witnessed before um was that the hands uh, um uh, kai's guide was talking about um giving us um light and healing mm-hmm. and so um effectively although we're still sitting in a circle there, there were like three sections who split us into three groups and okay. um, as um as hans said that and he, he turned to the first section he said um i'll give you healing and light and kai opened his hands and uh it sounds a little bit like star wars and you know power balls and all that kind of thing <laughs> um and he opened yeah. his hands and there were two bright flashes of light that came straight towards us um mm. and he did that for, for each section there and um again that's something that's quite quite impressive because it's uh, i think f- for for me certainly it's it's another display of spirit power uh, i think once you you feel that well yes they can move a table and that's kind of the extent of it and then of course you get other phenomena and then other phenomena um and myself, <clears throat> excuse me, myself witnessing this, um, spirit aren't limited to anything, are they? Really, they can do, they can produce anything, really. Um, but it, but it's, it was just um, something really amazing. And uh, there was, um, it, it was the, the reaction from the rest of the room yeah um, was something like um at a fireworks show you know when oh it's yeah, like, oh, it's amazing. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah i love it when amazing. that happens the mm. the sparks of light and stuff and in my head i mean i've seen this a few times with with um in kai's seances and um i mean again it's not kai doing it he's he's in the when you know i'm not putting him down, down. It's, he's like, in trance yeah. you know when you say it's coming from his hands it is from yeah. his hands but he's in a complete trance you know he's yeah. been taken away and spirit are complete the spirit team are taken over mm. and it's a shame that he doesn't get to see this is another thing that <laughs> mediums they don't get to see what they you know they the phenomena that they're, they're taking place they just hear the stories so yeah. this is another side of memes that we don't understand is that they're in a very deep trance they don't remember anything and so they're just hearing all these stories after you know and um so i mean phenomenal. nothing for them must yeah it? You know, I think say, oh, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, do you remember this? No. <laughs> oh, but you must know because you did this. No. Yeah. 
But um, I mean, a good thing about these mediums, Kai and, and others, is that they have a passion, they have a, an understanding and a desire for this. And so they're often reading testimonials and stories. And um, when I was in one of the seances, and I've seen this a few times with the light happening. This is what mm. I want to cover because in my mind, I wanted to ask Hans the question. So I was like, I, I want him to answer. So I set out my mind to Hans. I said, why why is this light happening why are we seeing this mm. and uh, he replied within like a few seconds and says what you guys saw there was the tip of a light being um that basically these portals that are opened up um from spirit when they're doing the seances they open up a portal mm. and um in the hands you see um you know these portals opening up and when you see the light um coming out that's the end of like a the energy of a, like a light beam that's come from a, a different place somewhere else. Um, so that was quite interesting that you can speak to spirit in your mind, especially in the seances and things will be answered. You don't have to say it out loud. Yeah. So yeah, which is very good, but yeah, it's a bad thing that all these mediums, they don't remember anything when, when they come out of the seance, they have no idea what's happened. Um, <laughs> Yeah. It's, so, it's very much a, a secondhand experience, isn't it? Um, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, and I think uh, I think the greater shame of that is, you know, because um, you can say, oh, well, this happened or this relative came through. Um, and it's one thing hearing that this and that's happened, but to, to have the experience, the emotional connection with the relative and then, you know, perhaps um, caressing your cheek and talking to you, the mm. energy from them, um, they miss all that, don't they? You yeah. Know, it, um, yeah, it's a it's a second hand story to them, but uh, I do understand because when I do readings, I never um, remember anything, and then when I do services, and usually my addresses are in in light trance or maybe something slightly heavier, and the same thing happens. You know, well, people say, "Oh, that was nice," and it's uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> the thing is, everyone's having these experiences every single night, and this is an mm. area which you know I've studied a lot about out of body experiences and lucid dreaming. That mm. we have a tons of experiences. I had some experiences last night about an, an ex uh, neighbour that when we used to live in Reading, mm. and um, I was you know having some information, so I relayed back to my mum. To I knew that it was like a relative, like a like a son or, or whatever, and I was like, okay, I don't know why they've come into my consciousness. But I always use the term of ginger trailing back into, you know, the experience. So if you if you trace back your memory, your mind think, okay, did I create that? Or is that something externally from me? That's when you know it's an experience. But everyone has had all these experiences their whole life, every single night, but they just don't remember. So this is very similar to, um, you know, physical mediumship where we've had all these experiences throughout the whole night. Uh, the most amount of dreams I've had in one morning, I've counted about 40 dreams. Wow. And you know, that's just one, that's just one night at a space of like six hours. So we have all these hundreds of experiences all throughout the night. But when we wake up, how many do we remember? And, um, you know, how many interactions have we forgotten about? Um, because coming back into this physical reality, we have the amnesia that what has happened. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, the, how these realities shift. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's the same for physical mediums. They just trance, they just don't remember everything. Yeah. We're just going to go into a break and we'll be straight back for the last segment after this. This is the voice of spirit, your connection to the other side. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it. And in order to experience it, you have to experience it in your imagination. Explore with us by calling 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Uh, give us a call now. Worldwide Colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors. Welcome back to the Voice of Spirit, your connection 
to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at kcorradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the voice of spirit, Leo Bonomo. Welcome back. And uh, once again, the show's flying through. Can't believe it's the last segment. Uh, if you do want to make donations, then you can go to the archive page on kcorradio.com and uh, you can make a donation there. Everything's gratefully accepted. If you do feel um, that you want to place an advert with us as well, then you can certainly do that and we can talk um about um how we can arrange that and it's it is um uh very cost effective and uh, if you are interested in uh, the book summerland and a book of thoughts you can find those on amazon um talking to uh ladrin of the past new side retreat and some of the wonderful experiences that that he's had and the retreat that his family set up and I'm sure you're quite aware sometimes you go into a place and there's just wonderful, wonderful energies and you feel right at home. Um, that's how it feels. And I, I was privileged to have gone there. Uh, so welcome back, Ladrin. Hello. And again, thanks for this opportunity to share stories. And uh, yeah, it's uh, relay information and knowledge that um, isn't very well popular at the moment in this reality which is uh, a lovely subject of physical mediumship which is great oh absolutely and it's really nice to get a kind of background about it you know um not only um the setup um of of the parsonage retreat itself and the building work and that but also the behind the scenes thing because uh, we we often get mediums uh, uh, physical mediums uh, talking about their work and they do this and they do that um, but uh, um, as we kind of discussed uh, uh, it, it's sort of second hand because they're not aware of what goes on they know what they go through they know how they prepare but they're completely out of it so it's nice to get uh, a unique perspective on that um, yeah. we're going to talk about sorry um, we're going to talk about um, Jose M- Madrado now um, uh, uh, I, I prefer trance painter uh, I'm not actually yeah. very fond of the word psychic because um, yeah. for me personally it kind of conjures up pictures of you know the end of peer stuff and that trance p- painter or mediumistic painter much better description um, tell us a little bit about him um, well with all these mediums, I just want to add that, you know, we don't see the years of practice and stuff, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, from the past, you know, it's like us at the retreat here behind the scenes. It's, we only see the final thing. We haven't seen the years of, of sitting and then trance and stuff. I don't, I don't know a lot about, um, Jose Madrado, uh, or know that he's from Brazil. Um, he has no background or any, any, uh, abilities in painting at all. Um, he basically, I believe, was a full materialization medium uh, in seances many, many years ago, uh, I, I believe. And he was struggling. Uh, he's got his own orphanage, I think. Um, um, quite it's a wonderful building, um, the City of Light. Um, yeah. And uh, we were talking to him afterwards. He has um, 1,800 um, doctors, surgeons, dentists, the work wow. for free um he basically looks after orphan children and anybody that's that's needy really and uh, he doesn't mm. get help from the government but it's a big beautiful place and if anyone's interested um if you want to um uh, uh google uh, jose madrado it's spelled j-o-s-e M-E-D-R-A-D-O, uh, or you can just Google the City of Light um, and see the wonderful, wonderful work they do there um, for, for anyone that's disadvantaged um, and orphans as well. Yeah. 
He um yeah he doesn't speak any English very very no. little like basically high and stuff. Uh, my girlfriend's Spanish, so she did an interview with him um last week when he was here, and so that I'll be translating that into English because I'm I'm excited to hear what he says. So I'll be <laughs> basically I'll be doing the voiceover for him um and saying what he says in in Spanish. He speaks Spanish and Brazilian, uh, yeah. Portuguese Brazilian because they're very similar. Yeah. Um, so that's what I know about him really is that basically I think he was struggling to, to work and study and do the orphanage. And I think the physical mediumship stuff was really draining him. Mm. So he basically said, you know, look, you know, if you're going to do this, then step back a bit. I'm not doing this anymore. So they proposed to him of saying, okay, well, we're going to paint for you and you're going to sell the paintings and this will help, um, fund the orphanage, you know? So that's what he does. He travels and all the money that is um all the paintings it was quite remarkable when he was here on saturday uh 14th of september um he he did seven paintings within an hour very very fast some five six minutes i think one was about 10 or 12 minutes long but very very fast and um you can see the and every single painting was a different painter there was painters like van gogh and um Rem- Renoir, Renoir, I think you are. Um, um, uh, I've forgotten the rest, but they're still uh, on the right up on my website. Monet, yeah. Monet, yeah. Um, I mean, like if if I, I think if one of these painters were to spend like a few hours, then it would be bigger and more detailed. But it's very very fast, you know. And it was very beautiful as well to see how all this energy was was merging. And um, I mean, you know, some of them were really good detail as well. Absolutely. Um, but very fast. And it's almost like with Kai, um, it's like they mapped out the energetics of the area. And mm. it's with uh, Jose Madrado, it's almost like they've had like a, like a team meeting almost. They're saying, <laughs> okay, we're going to paint this. We want the certain paint. We know exactly where the paints are going to be. And yeah. we're just going to paint very fast. So rather than sitting there thinking, okay, what should I paint? That, that doesn't happen. It just no. gets on with it straight away. And again, it's not um, Jose doing it at all. It's um, it's the the painters, you know, the, oh, these painters that are coming true. through. Yeah, yeah, very very fast, very accurate. And um, I did. I was the auctioneer at the end of it. I was, you know, I wasn't expecting to do, the, to do that. <laughs> but um, I think you went away with the painting, which you were happy about. I and, did. Uh, yeah. The others. Yeah. But yeah. Um, also, what happened in there? If you remember, there was a strong smell. And oh yeah. Jose Madrado said his translator who was there translating in English said that what you're smelling is the ectoplasm. I mean, he's a very, very strong medium and uh, you could smell this strong smell in the room. And they said, this is where the cosmic doctors are coming into place. And, um, you know, that's the smell and they're working and they were doing a demonstration of healing. And uh, was you part of that circle at the time? when you were doing I, some I was. Yeah, I got some healing. And um, as uh, one of the assistants um, was holding my hands, um, I felt myself jolt upwards um, right. and stood up kind of straight. And I wasn't sure at the time whether it was just myself that could smell it. But there was a really, really strong smell of ether. Um, yeah. And then as strong as it was, it increased. And... Um, everybody in the room could smell it um and jose was talking about um, that was the surgeons you know and and the smell they kind of bring with them um again to have it's literally like someone's just tipped a whole bottle of ether into the room it appears you're very aware of it it's unmistakable the smell and then it's gone well you're you saying know. ether like you know it's a, everyone here knows what ether smells like, but it was. Mm-hmm. It's hard to describe describe what it smells like, isn't it? It's it, it is it's a um, sort of musty yeah. smell, but it's not um, revolting. No. It's, yeah, it, it's it's um. Oh it's God. different. <laughs> it is. It's almost like a very very strong disinfectant, but it it's it's distinct from disinfectant. It, it yeah. is hard to describe. Yeah. Um, but but again, you know, from from a physical perspective, um, uh, if you were thinking about how can you fake that, I mean, you can't because you can't suddenly produce that strong a smell and then it's gone because there's always a residue, you know, if you're spraying it or something. So um, even just the smell 
um, is um, evidential, isn't it? It's really, very, you know? very evidential. Yeah, I was trying to think of, of um, another way of putting it. Um, no one there, they're spraying anything. I can. It just, it just happened, you know. So, exactly. yeah. And again, you can't just make it disappear because it no. just went. <laughs> you know um so it, it's it's fantastic um fantastic evidence um mm. and i know from reading up a little bit um uh on, on uh, jose uh that the 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 one, one of the incredible things is that the uh because he signs them doesn't he? he signs them twice apart from picasso because yes, picasso so right. it's his work yeah. <laughs> but um generally um the the artist would sign so if it was Renoir, it'd be his signature, and then Jose puts his signature underneath. Um, but they, they've looked at those signatures, you know, um, art historians and art, art experts, and they've confirmed that the um, the signatures are correct. And right. they've also um, looked at the style of painting, which mm. matches who it's supposed to be. Um, and the wonderful, the other wonderful thing is um, that they talk about, you know, the brush strokes being the same. Um, mm. Now, the odd thing is when you see um, Jose work, um, he uses a brush occasionally, yeah. but um, he uses sponges, his fingers, fingers. Yeah. and you, it, it's, I mean, sometimes you don't quite know what it is. And then other times, um, I think in the first painting he did, which was a, a Monet, I think, I'm not sure. Um, I think it was. With the, it was the uh, Renoir. Um, yep, you're right. Actually, the, uh, yeah, it was the Renoir. The, the vase of flowers. And um, that's quite magical to see because you see dubs of paint going on and you see his <laughs> fingers kind of flick about and you go, my God, there's a rose. And yeah. it's intricate, isn't it? It's not like a smudge and that, and that could be a, it's intricate and you've got the leaves and everything, um, literally in seconds. Um, it's amazing to watch. And, um, if anyone's interested in looking, um, oh, do, do, will you be putting the video of that on, on your site? That's already up. Um, ah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone wants to look, um, uh, I'm going to try and copy that because I bought a painting and, uh, to have the painting, uh, signed. Um, and that was the other thing. Um, uh, Jose was saying that, um, in all the years he's been doing it, there is never a repeat. So yeah. every, every painting, how many hundreds of thousands probably is done. Um, uh, even from the same artist, it's not the same picture. Um, so it'd be interesting for me to, to, um, see that video and say, here's the painting, uh, cause just the way it was produced. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> is he planning to come back? Do you know? Uh, I hope so. Uh, that'd be nice. Um, hopefully I'm not sure when probably next year now, because you know, we're in September and, um, I don't know, but he travels a lot. That's all I know. He's in, I think he's in Amsterdam area, uh, or somewhere in Europe at the moment. So mm. he's he's definitely traveling about, but yeah, it'd be nice to have him back. Bless him. And uh, yeah. And if anyone's um, thinking of, um, I mean, you can find uh, the videos on YouTube and obviously uh, on the part, uh, Parsonage site as well. But if you do um, have a chance to see him work, um, it is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Um, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, as you say, some of the. Um, I'm not sure where I read it could have been on the parsonage site itself. Um, but, um, it was saying that, uh, uh, the, the original artist, um, being alive would have taken many, many months to produce that work. Um, and, uh, again, I think part of the evidence is how quick it's produced. I mean, it, it's, um, and the depth of it, because uh, um, he uses acrylic oils, um, uh, acrylic paint as well, doesn't he? So there's texture in it as well. I mean, it's uh, yeah, totally. unbelievable. It blew my mind, I've got to say. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, um, I think, as you were saying earlier, it, it's wonderful to just, you know, say, right, I haven't seen that. Let's experience it. And that's something that I love. No, totally. That's great. Definitely. 
Yeah. Um, you were also going to mention um, um, Michael, who's um, another physical medium, and he does a lot of reports, um, you were saying, doesn't he? Yeah, I f- I th- he specialises in a lot of things. Um, he does cabinet seances, um, portations, uh, as they call. Um, so, yeah, he um, when he does a portation, he, he basically um, has a banana in, in the room. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he yeah. goes round and the banana goes round in a circle and says, make sure there's no stones in it or crystals and <laughs> objects, yeah. you know, and yeah. people watch him eat it. And then he'll go into trance and go in the cabinet. And then, um, yeah, you know, he'll be be searched beforehand. You know, he's welcome to be, you know, people say, you're welcome to strip search me because they've got nothing on me. And um, it happens quite fast, maybe about f- five minutes. We have some music and then the lights will come on. It'll be in light. You know, it doesn't have to be in darkness. And yeah. people are allowed to, you know, take take pictures and video if they like. Just, um, I don't think flashes are, you know, no flashes, obviously. But, yeah. Um, yeah, they just start, you know, projectile coming out of his, his mouth, mainly. And uh, sometimes big ones. Um, and then after he gets, like, a message to each person in, in the seance in the, in the, as a reading... Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've had some very interesting ones, which have been nice uh, for different reasons. So I yeah. I've, I keep them with me uh, yeah. when I meditate and stuff. And they just help the person um, to grow spiritually. And sometimes it's a message from a past over loved one. It could be a message about that their, their path or their health or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, the list is endless. Really, it's all unique on the individual. But um, yeah, he did a past life uh, sort of séance. Um, He's, he, I think the second time he came came around, he, before then, he was asking, you know, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. And when there was a question thing the first time, I said, oh, could you do a, like a past life sort of evening thing? Because I was very interested yeah. um, to hear about my past lives. And and um, his guide uh, comes through and speaks and gives us all this information, you know, mm-hmm. and it's sort of when you have information about your past life, it's sort of makes you wonder about this life and the, and your personality <laughs> you know and yeah. like i've always loved combats and i've always loved like the army stuff you know yeah. i don't want to be in the army but in yeah. a past life i was in the army and mm. you know i asked a question like why was this and it was very short-lived yeah. but i mean um i was in uh, the vietnam war and i died young but at a young age in this life since I can remember when I was very young, I always wanted to be in a tent in the summer out in the garden. And my parents oh. thought I was crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's because I was probably setting up camp and as a soldier. Yeah. And I yeah. ended up, you know, being uh, killed. Um, but I was being, I was told by his guide saying that um, I got to learn to duck. So basically <laughs> I didn't duck soon enough and I died. But yeah. I remember passing over. Um, this was many, many years ago. I remember passing over and, and seeing things and there was a crossover between that life and another life that I had, which was confirmed to me. So yeah, great information. And, but Michael Shane, again, all mediums, they work in different ways. Michael Shane is, is his passion really is about giving people knowledge mm-hmm. and, um, which, you know, from the masters, he works closely with the masters, El More, um, St. Germain. Uh, we had a good, good uh, session where we had a wax, um, like a baking tray, uh, a foil baking tray. We yeah. had like warm wax put in there. And Saint Germain, he's quite a big character. Um, yeah. he, his his hand came out. We didn't see it, but it was pressed into the into the wax mold. And it's yeah. huge, very long, big fingers. And yeah. next to Michael's hand, it just does not add up. Do you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. So that was interesting. And I got to shake his hand as well, Saint Germain. Um, so yeah, some great great stories um so i'm looking forward to having him back again in november yeah. um so yeah it's uh, again every medium works differently completely different it, it's nice that um he can work in even subdued light because again um that that's a fantastic thing um i did hear um uh, uh some years ago that uh, as an experiment they got some some uh, warm wax and uh, um, uh, a spirit came through that had uh, a criminal record and he put his hand in so it formed a kind of glove uh, dematerialized his hand now obviously you've got the fingers and the wrist you, you can't 
get the hand out without breaking the wax. So the wax was intact and um, they, they cut off the fingertips and they took fingerprints of it and, mm. um, and they identified the guy that confirmed who it was. Wow. Um, so, you know, it, it's um, again, um, incredible stuff. And I know there was an experiment um, some years ago where they were trying to produce some um, DNA um, that they could match with, you know, um, either the body or whatever happened. I mean, obviously, there's specialized cases, you know, where they would have DNA in the first place and then spirit produce it. Um, but it, it's the kind of thing that uh, can and could and does go anywhere, doesn't it? I mean, there, there aren't any limits. And I, I think um, that's wonderful as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I mean, all these, uh, I think I was covering this earlier, but there's a lot of mediums out there who aren't public, who are just as good as all these other mediums. They all work completely different. And they're all having great evidential uh, stuff coming through. Um, yeah. And this is why we're here. You know, we, w- we want to set up this place, not just for the public, um, public mediums that are going public, but also, you know, circles that want to meet other, you know, good sitters as good batteries um, to learn together. So... <clears throat> So it's our it's our mission to find other physical mediums out there who we're not going to release go in public at all. We mm. you know we have very high standards of of yeah. um, of security and and everything like that. And it's just it's meeting like minded people and people that you know regular sitters that have been here. They want they want more. Do you know what I mean? And there are many probably hundreds and thousands of other mediums out there who you've probably heard stories of these other mediums that we've been talking about. Um, that are just hidden and quiet and don't go public just because they don't want to. It's, you know, free choice. Um, and they have their own circle that's probably going 20, 30 years plus maybe, um, or even shorter. Um, but, you know, we would like to meet these other people that are out there. And, you know, if they're listening or they know other people, then, you know, do get in touch. Um, it's just nice to build up a network and to keep things private and confidential. And, and safe as well, which is important. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got a few minutes to go. Um, sure. So um, be, before before the show ends, and it always ends too quickly, um, <laughs> would you like to give us the um, um, the Parsonage um, website, the circle? Um, uh, uh, it is. Is it called? <laughs> it's just escaped me for some reason um yeah just give us some of those details again so people can can look at the site and uh you know inform themselves yeah i mean i'm still updating it it's still something that's new that's been going on for a bit it's just um you know part inside retreat sorry part inside trance physical mediumship center it's quite long and yeah. not everyone knows how to you know spell that instantly yeah. so um i was speaking to my father a few months back and I was saying, you know, we need to create something that's catchy that people can remember. Yeah. So we created a uh, circle sitters. So it's those who sit in a circle who sit and it's for developing mediums, people who want to learn more. So if you go on circle you'll find a lot of the information, how to contact us through there. Um, it's our main website, but on Facebook, um, it's a bit of a mouthful of a set, but if you type in passing it aside, trance and the physical mediumship center you'll find a lot of information on there and that's passing your side as p-a-r-s-o-n-a-g-e separate word side s-i-d-e and um yeah you should find a lot of testimonials past experiences um it's it's a nice little network that's going on and building up mm-hmm. and we believe that you know people that come to us uh sitters mediums um they're all vetted. They're all safe, um, all trustworthy. We all have good fun, and there's, you know, no problems with people. We make sure yeah. things are kept in, you know, secret. Secret, if that's what they want. Yeah. Um, and there are other circles that happen here, which you know aren't going public, and it's just, you know, having regular stuff. Thank you. It's Always been a joy to talk to you, and Thank we'll you see you next week. You've been listening to Leo Bonomo, Leo Bonomo, the host of The Voice of Spirit, live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. 
For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news.